Hey everybody, welcome to the Sorry Not Sorry Pickleball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Kelly. This week, we had the Selkirk Texas Open on the Carvana PPA Tour. Holy crap, was this an awesome weekend for pickleball. We had so many intense moments. Probably had one of the best pickleball matches of all time. We're going to get into it. Before we do that, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button, subscribing to the show in case you're not already, sharing it with your friends if you want to. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. This is the new and improved forgiveness. I just want to apologize to you again, tell you how I'm sorry I am about the mistake. And if there's anything at all I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Come along, Howard. Find me your lobotomy. I'm not sorry I took the money. <laughs> okay, so first off, we got to talk about the women's singles match on Sunday. It was one of the best games of all time. Obviously, if you watch Pickleball, you know that Anna Lee Waters and Leia Jansen have a real strong rivalry. It's pretty much always, not pretty much, it is always Anna Lee Waters coming out on top. Leia Jansen is real good at coming in second. Leia Jansen came out firing in this game. First off, Leia Jansen came out in the first game and whooped Anna Lee 11 to 3. That was nobody's guess. Then in game two, we had a real close game. Anna Lee Waters just could not get anything going against Leia Jansen. Leia Jansen was playing the best pickleball of her life, and Anna Lee Waters had no answer for it. Not only were we gifted one of the best matches of all time, we were gifted with one of the best memes of all time. Listen to this scream from Anna Lee Waters. Anna Lee getting so frustrated. And then puts one in the net. And Leia Jansen somehow. Did she say fuck? I think she screamed fuck. Is that a technical? I'll be honest. I'm glad she didn't get a technical foul or whatever you call it for cursing. That would be a little bit lame if somebody, you know, got an advantage because you cursed. I'm a big cursor on the pickleball court. I think people should be able to say the words that they want to. But man, was it really interesting to see Anna Lee get really frustrated in the middle of a match. Leia Jansen ends up getting it to 10-10 in the second game. If she could pull this off, she would win the match. Fast forward, it's 12-12 in the second game. The most historic game of Leia Jansen's career. And he calls a foot fault. Are you kidding me? Let's check it out. Alan Roman, the ref, with the biggest call of all time in the history of the PPA Tour. Let's take a look at the replay. Leia Jansen says, way to get your TV time. I mean, I don't know. She may have dragged the foot. It may have been off the ground. So close. Oh, I don't know. Look, it is it is close. I think it's too close to even call. So disappointing that she now lost the advantage and then she never seemed to get it back. She ended up losing this second game. And Anna Lee was able to pull it off in the third. So anybody with eyes to watch this game noticed Leia Jansen was playing incredible pickleball. And Anna Lee Waters had no answer for it. This was all Leia Jansen playing well. This was not some case where Anna Lee Waters was just playing bad. And no matter who played her, she would have just played a bad against anybody. Which is why so many people are infuriated with this interview right here with Lee Waters, her mom and coach. Listen in. Thanks, Dave. This is not a position we often find Anna Lee in, down to somebody uh, in a singles matchup. What are you telling her? Yeah, um, right now she um, she doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in her shots. Um, Leia's using a new paddle that has twice the pop, three times the spin. It's not coming up off the ground. Twice the pop, three times the spin. Her voice sounds like there's a death in the family because of it. What are we going to do? Anna Lee's used to facing the Leia Jansen of the past, and, and this paddle has improved her game a lot. So what do you do when a player comes out here with new... Must be all paddle, huh? Change ...how she's playing the game. What is your advice? I've tried to tell Anna Lee to forget about the paddle. 
um, and focus more on herself and what she can do better because right now she's just not making her shots at all. I mean, this is not the Annalie we all know, and it's okay. And I've tried to tell her, you know what? Leia's playing great. If you lose, you lose. Um, just try to focus on yourself and what you see. I mean, that's a shot she never misses. So she, it's just not her right now. That's okay. Just not her. Just focus on yourself. It's just not you, but it's also the paddle that Leia's using. But you're just not hitting your shots. So it's like... Okay, which one is it? Is Anna Lee playing bad and not hitting her shots? Is it Leia's paddle? How about Leia's just playing great? Yeah, she has a new paddle, and it's probably helping, but that doesn't mean that's all that's going on. What, you put that paddle in somebody else's hands, and all of a sudden they're just going to beat Anna Lee Waters? I mean, that doesn't sound like you have a whole ton of confidence in Anna Lee if you feel like just any paddle would be able to just all of a sudden beat her. I mean, man, we had a point where Leia Jansen, she ended up getting championship point on her paddle. She had a chance. Anna Lee just so frustrated the whole time. But unfortunately, she just could not convert it. And then Anna Lee somehow crawled her way back and was able to pull this win off. She seals her fate as getting the gold. Oh, so disappointing, too, to end on a slip. Who threw a banana peel in that damn court? So, Annalie ended up winning the gold in women's singles, but I think I speak for most of us when we say, man, is that so disappointing. What's interesting about this is it shows Annalie Waters can be beat. Maybe you need a Perseus paddle. Maybe you need Annalie to not hit her shots. But regardless, it shows that she's not infallible, and it is possible that maybe sometime soon we could see Leia Jansen pull off a win and get a gold medal. Something ironic too about them complaining about the paddle. I wouldn't even say they're really complaining about the paddle, but they're just like, oh, it's this crazy good paddle. It's just unbeatable. When Annalie is literally in the next match going to play with Ben Johns, who has the same exact paddle. So, I mean, you don't hear anybody complaining like, oh, Ben Johns is just playing with this paddle that's got three times the pop, three times the spin or whatever number she crunched in her head. Yola has to be loving this right now. Yola's like, yeah, you know what? It does have three times the pop. It does have twice the spin. It will help you beat Annalie Waters. And yeah, it's probably the only reason she beat her. Yeah, well, it's that paddle. That's the only reason. Yeah, everybody else, you should buy the paddle when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Speaking of unbeatable paddles, let's talk about Ben Johns and his singles match. He was playing somebody new that we haven't seen that much. Juame Martinez Vic, who turns out is Rafa Nadal's hitting partner. Kind of an interesting little fact about him. I guess he lives in Hawaii, so doesn't get to train much with a lot of pros. Recently did some training with Tyson McGuffin. Seems like he's been working hard to come up the ranks. Before we talk about what happened in this match against Ben Johns on Sunday in the championship, let's rewind a little bit to some of the earlier matches that we saw on Thursday. So in the semifinals, Martinez Vic was taking on Stackstrud. Stackstrud has been on fire recently in both singles and in doubles. So it's no small deal that not only did Martinez Vic beat a ton of great players to make his way to the semifinal, he took on probably one of the best singles players in the game right now, besides Ben Johns. Not only is he really good, he's kind of like a flashy player, so it's kind of fun to watch. He doesn't seem like cocky and super like, oh, I'm the fucking best. He's more just like trying to have fun and being a little bit showy for the crowd. I find it really entertaining. The best part of this match came in the post-game interview. Check this out. That's right, Michelle. Well, uh, Yame is over here walking it off a little bit. We don't want him to cramp up. He's like, oh, I got to come on screen for this? This has been for you. It's been a long time coming. You came in as the 19th seed. You are now in Championship Sunday. How does this feel right now? Uh, it feels good. I, I've been um, wanting to be in Championship Sunday. I, I honestly think I am the most underrated player in the PPA. I've been okay, maybe. We'll see. These guys, top five people. Other than that, I keep winning everybody, and I, it, was about, it was about to happen in the here. I'm here to stay, man. I kind of like that, not gonna lie. That everyone notices about you is that drop shot you've gotten so good at really using the back and forth of the court, not just the side to side. Where does that come from? Uh, well, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out the game, honestly. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, I go to the changeover and I ask my friends, like, do I have to hit harder? I don't know, man. And, and it, sometimes it just clicks and I start going forward. This is so relatable. And I'm like, oh, it's like this? Okay, that's, that works. Okay, fine. Yeah. I think we all get where he's coming from when he says something like that. It's like, sometimes you don't really know what you're doing in pickleball. You're just like, oh, that works. Okay, cool. I don't know. 
I wouldn't expect a pro to say that, but it makes me feel a little bit better about my game, I guess. So now fast forward to the championship match and ignore the fact that it says semifinal on the top left. I guess CBS Sports Network doesn't know how to do a broadcast that we all have to pay money for. Ben Johns was looking strong as hell in game one. Honestly, it made us all kind of feel like, ah, this is going to be a boring match. There's no competition here. But then game two happened. Juanme Martinez Vic got off to an early lead. Seemed like he kind of figured out how to play against Ben. The best part about this game was not only was Vic winning, he was having fun doing it too. Even when he screwed up, he's still having fun. Look at him doing push-ups. Like, yep, I can't allow that mistake. I gotta, I gotta train myself. Be better. Also, you know you're getting in Ben's head when he screams and fist pumps like that. If Ben is getting loud a little bit, that means you know that he's like, oh, shit, I got to turn it up right now. Game three, Ben ends up turning his hat backwards, which is a sign that he is turning his game around. And he ended up pulling off the win. Ben Johns gets the gold medal for men's singles. It was not easy for him, but he did it. Can you believe that a few weeks ago, we were all talking about, should we get rid of singles? Hmm, it is kind of boring. Hmm, it is taxing on the players. Do we really need it? Not a lot of people watch it. And then, of course, we have this weekend where the two singles matches on Sunday were the best pickleball matches of the weekend. All right, so moving on to the women's doubles match on Sunday. Our gold medal match was Megan Dizon and Etta Wright teamed up together to play against Catherine Parento and Anna Lee Waters. Catherine Parento and Anna Lee Waters teamed up together that is a tough thing to beat, especially from Etta Wright and Megan Dazon. I mean, good good for Megan and Etta to make it to the finals, but I think we all knew they didn't really have a chance in this one. Now, the most interesting part of women's doubles was in the semifinal match on Saturday. Jesse Irvin and Leia Jansen ended up having their semifinal match against Catherine Parento and Anna Lee Waters delayed because the net broke. The weather this weekend in Texas was so crazy. It was either so hot that it was unbearable because of how humid it was, or we had this intense wind and rain that came in all of a sudden. I mean, they literally had to take the net off the court and replace it with another one. By the time they got another replacement in there, it was too late. The wind was coming in. It started raining, and they ended up pushing the matches to the next day. This was so disappointing because Jesse Irvin and Leia Jansen were down 10-9. They even had the momentum moving forward, and the game just gets paused. So then the next day, they end up taking the lead, but they just couldn't hold on to it. I mean, who knows what would have happened if that game had continued. It's possible that their momentum would have carried them enough to pull off a first game win. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. And in two games straight, Anna Lee and Catherine Parento made their way to the finals. I got to say, Leia Jansen and Jesse Irvin, really good team. I think they're the right personality click. I know we said this with Elise Jones, and they were a pretty good team, but man, there's something really special about Jesse Irvin and Leia Jansen. I'm excited to see them keep continuing to partner up. I think that they could really do something special together. This was a really fun match to watch when they first were playing. Jesse Irvin loves screaming. And man, did it piss Anna Lee Waters off, which we all love. And then watch this scream retaliation. Oh, Catherine Parento answering back straight ahead. That was some weak shit, Anna Lee. That didn't sound like a real scream. Oh, Catherine Parento answering. I'm sorry, but that was just so forced on Anna Lee's part. Really? Speaking of screaming, we cannot go without talking about Etta Wright's family member that was in attendance. The whole game, she was screaming so loud. It was so annoying. And they the seventh seed upset. I mean, how drunk is she? She's got to be a little hammered, right? Woo. Okay, knowing that she's a family friend, like, that's cool that she's celebrating with her. But at the time, nobody knew. So they're like, who is this random fan just picking up at a right? <laughs> I mean, imagine this happened during, like, an NBA game. Jack Nicholson just runs on the court and does this to LeBron. The crowd the entire weekend was so wild. Listen to them right here. This was just right on point and, and just great from them. Let's hope they can continue it uh, here in the second half of this match. I mean, the whole match, they were screaming at the players. Somebody do something! <laughs> so he 
Jason, somebody do something. And they did. And just like that, the rain starts to come down. I guarantee you they're going to ask for a hindrance because somebody's Wait, shouting in the middle of that rally. And it was, honestly, it was distracting, even to me. What is more distracting, However, the crowd yelling like that? Note, I do believe. Or this shirtless dude just handing out drinks in the middle of your screen. Dude, you're hindering me from watching this match right now. Turns out there was an entire frat house that took a party bus and came to the game. That's why the crowd was so wild. I mean, look at these guys and gals. I guess frat kids could be into pickleball and they'd want to go out, get hammered, have fun on a weekend. There's a few people saying that they think that the PPA hired them or kind of like pushed them into going. I don't know what the truth is, if they just genuinely wanted to show up to a pickleball match or if they were kind of pushed into doing this. They were really, really distracting. But I gotta say, I love it when there's people who are hype watching pickleball. Now, the problem with me and this is, they don't seem like real fans. They don't seem like they give a fuck about what's going on. They just want to get hammered and scream and have the attention be on them. I haven't seen call and counter like that. Yeah, that was big. I mean, I'm glad they didn't get yelled at by the ref. I'm glad that there was no hindrance calls. It's loud enough it was possible to qualify for a hindrance. But why call one of those when you don't really need to? I mean, they're still going to get drunk and say shit regardless of if you yell at them or not. Honestly, the best move is not giving them attention. I mean, they did make the big moments pretty cool by getting real hype. Either way, I think pickleball is 10 times better when you got people who are being hype, even if they don't necessarily know what they're getting hype for. Like, Does that guy know who Ben Johns is? Probably not. Will he remember this tomorrow? Probably not. So while I say I have no problem with a ratty crowd, even if they don't know what's going on, I do think that there is a certain line that they can cross. I think it may have gotten real close to that, but what made it even more awkward was how Hannah Johns treated it. I mean, listen to this question she asked Anna Lee. Uh, a fan out there yelled out as you guys took the court, Anna Lee, you're the one for me. Have you seen an uptick in how many dating requests you've gotten, you know, inbox? She's 16. <laughs> Yeah, my DMs have gotten fuller for sure. Um, uh, yeah, but no, this crowd's awesome. It just adds that extra element. Uh, we love you guys, so thank you for being so loud into the match. It just makes it so much more fun. I think Annalie handled it pretty well. She didn't really, you know, harp on the whole, like, dating DM thing. Was, but and we hope that they continue she's 16 years old. She is a child. She is not an adult. And those kids are from a frat. They are adults. They're probably in their 20s. And this is really awkward. Now, I'm not here to control people and tell them what they should and should not do. But while we're on the subject, there's been a lot of rumors going around that Anna Lee Waters is dating Christian Alshon. Ah! If that's true, that is terrifyingly disgusting. Now, first off, disappointing on Anna Lee Waters' parents' behalf that they would kind of allow that to happen. Even more disappointing is Christian Alshon. Dude, how old are you? You're 22? And you're dating someone that's 16? Six years younger than you? Oh my goodness. You know, this discussion's been happening. I've seen on a lot of like forums and stuff and people are trying to justify this. Oh, she makes a lot of money. Or, oh, her parents are supervising. Or I even saw one lady say, oh, well, a lot of 70-year-olds are dating people that are 55-year-olds. Uh, I think in that example, there's one key difference. The 55-year-old's an adult who can make her own smart, rational choices. This is a 16-year-old child. And it's okay because her parents are okay with it? I guess I can't really say much about Annalie Waters, but I definitely will say Christian Alshon. Dude, like, find someone your own age, man. This is just disgusting. And Hannah Johns, really? Trying to normalize catcalling a 16-year-old girl? I don't know. Something just feels really icky about this. Ugh. All right. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about something a little bit more clean and less awkward. Speaking of clean, this was a clean win in the men's doubles Sunday championship match. It was Ben Johns and Colin Johns. Surprise, surprise. Against J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. I thought this match was going to be a lot closer than it ended up being. I really think that they put Dylan Frazier in a position where he was not able to do much. 
JW too made a lot of mistakes and you really don't ever see him get emotional about it. But watch this. Pops one up, pissed off, chucks his paddle off to the side. I mean, that's as much emotion as you're going to get at a JW Johnson, let's be honest. But if he's doing something like that, he must be really frustrated. Ben Johns and Colin Johns ended up pulling out the victory. They won gold for the men's doubles. It just makes you wonder, too, is there anybody that could beat Ben and Colin? I mean, it's like either J-Dub and Dylan or Matt Wright and Riley Newman. But it makes you wonder, like, what if J-Dub partnered up with Riley Newman? I mean, it's possible that J-Dub and Riley could pull off a win, but would their personalities match up? I mean, I guess it's possible. They both are pretty quiet. I mean, Riley gets really chirpy, but he's not like a, let me be like super connected and friendly with my partner type. I would think that J-Dub likes playing with Dylan because they seem like they're really good friends. But man, it just seems like Ben and Colin are unbeatable. So somebody's got to try something. All right, last but not least, let's talk about the mixed doubles final. It was aired on ESPN, which is why I don't have any highlights to show because the stream I watched it on got pulled because ESPN is looking around for illegal streams, which sucks. I will say it was a little disappointing because they only did a two out of three. It's a little bit weird that all of a sudden once ESPN comes around and wants to put some pickleball on their channel... Now we got to cave in and be like, oh, well, they only gave us an hour, so let's just make it two out of three. I don't know if that would have made a difference because Ben and Anna Lee ended up taking the gold against the Newman siblings. Ben and Anna Lee played great. I don't think it would have made a difference if it went to five, but still, you never know. And that's why you play five games is because, well, that gives you a chance. It's pretty cool that Pickleball made it to ESPN. I mean, you know, of course, before it was on ESPN Plus, right? We even made it to ESPN 2 with Jack Sock. But then we end up getting it actually on official ESPN. I mean, look, that's a pretty big accomplishment, whether you're happy that it was hard to find the game or not. You got to have a little bit of like, okay, that's pretty cool. Even J.W. Johnson made the top 10 this weekend. The Selkirk Texas Open, you're watching J.W. Johnson and his partner, Dylan Frazier. Johnson around the post, in for the point. It's a pretty cool play. Deserving of number 10. The quarterfinals for mixed doubles was pretty fun to watch too. We had a lot of great moments on Friday that were really fun. You'll even see right here after game one, Ben Johns and Matt Wright, they get a nice little hug and it's like, wait a minute, what's that all about? So for those that don't know, Riley Newman before the tournament this week, he posted this on his Instagram. He said, after much thought, consideration and admiration for the great game of pickleball i have personally decided that going forward i will forgo the tapping of paddles after each game i know this will be off-putting to some but i believe this will help elevate the optics of pro pickleball in addition to that i also think it's a silly thing to do in no other sport do you see opponents come together in the middle of competition and say good job they wait until competition is over to do that which is exactly what i will be doing as well I would love to know your thoughts on this, whether you play professionally or not. Do you agree or disagree? After much thought, consideration, and admiration for the great game of pickleball, I have personally decided that going forward, I will forgo peeing in pottery plants outside of people's homes that I stay at when I'm at a tournament. If you don't know that story, go find out about it. Anyways, the whole paddle tap thing. I hate this question. It's like one of those dumb questions that they do sometimes on Tuesday Night Pickleball where they'll like interview people and be like, hot dog or hamburger? Hmm? Which one do you think? You know, and it's like, dude, nobody cares if you prefer movies to TV shows. I don't care if you prefer paddle tapping to not paddle tapping. I really think that people are cool with it either way. And let's just make one thing clear. So let's not forget, Leia Jansen was the first one to ever bring up no paddle tapping. And everybody got all pissed off at her. Like, how dare you? You're so unsportsmanlike. You're such a bad person. Why would you ever suggest that? And then all of a sudden, Riley Newman does it. And everybody's like, hmm, you know what? He has a point. Yeah, I think we probably should stop this. Let's be honest. If Riley Newman doesn't want to paddle tap, cool. Who cares? If Ben Johns and Matt Wright want to hug and paddle tap, I'm cool with that too. I really don't think it makes a huge difference. The funniest thing that happened that we obviously don't have because it was on ESPN was in the finals, the mixed doubles match, Riley Newman lived up to his word and didn't paddle tap Ben and Anna Lee. 
So then Anna Lee ran around the other side of the net and paddle tapped Ben for him. Here it is. Anna Lee's like, you know what, Ben? I got you. Hold up. Paddle tap. There we go. Also, we can't talk about mixed doubles without talking about this great interview from Big Papa Jimmy. It gets, you know, if it's flexible, it uh, it gets softer. So you got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, uh, sorry, guys, I'm really tired. If, if the ball is softer, it goes slower. So that favors, you know guys with like that want to slow it down don't really have the hands kind of like a federico stack shoot might be an example uh no yeah it's hot out here honestly i uh i just need to go inside and and get some water or something <laughs> he seems like he's about to pass out it was hot this weekend i'm honestly surprised this man is still standing after this look at how heavy he's breathing he looks like he's about to fall asleep and by fall asleep i mean faint Look, he just bails. He's like, I gotta go. I mean, just like, look at this one match with Tyson McGuffin. He is dripping in sweat. I think it's sweat. He looks like he went to a water park and just decided to start playing pickleball. How do you get that sweaty? He said he went through 20 shirts, 20 wristbands, 8 shorts, 8 pairs of socks, and 3 pairs of shoes. And that's just in singles day. <laughs> Not to mention he played a whole nother 2 days. You know, when you think about the costs associated with pickleball tournaments, it's like the tournament fees, you know, having to like buy your paddle and like regular equipment. Nobody ever considers the fact that you might have to have 20 different shirts and three pairs of shoes. Thank God he's got a Skechers deal. So that's going to do it for a recap of all the games on Sunday. But before we stop talking about the Selkirk Texas Open, there was something really funny that happened kind of on the side of things. Many people like myself, Love watching these matches on YouTube. That was very all over the place this weekend. We had ESPN streams. We had CBS Sports streams. We had it on YouTube sometimes and back and forth and whatnot. But I think a lot of people really enjoy when it's on YouTube because they have the live chat. Occasionally, you'll get pro players hopping in there. You have a ton of great fans, people who do different podcasts in the pickleball world hop on there. We had one day where all of a sudden... An account pops in and has a few messages, and it says Mr. Beast. Now, I don't know much about this Mr. Beast guy, but I guess he's like a really big guy on Behind YouTube. Me he makes these really popular videos. That he has 157 million subscribers. This dude is probably the biggest guy on YouTube for sure. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you just see somebody in the live chat with the name Mr. Beast hop in, and everybody's like, Mr. Beast watches Pickleball? What? Is that really him? You had some people being like, it is really him. We got David Dobrook, that other YouTube guy. And we got all these other YouTubers who like Pickleball. Why would it be so weird that Mr. Beast also watches Pro Pickleball on his weekend? Sure, I guess it's possible, right? Turns out it wasn't him. It was completely fake. And for some reason, the PPA thought that it would be a good idea to make him a mod of the chat. You could imagine how terrible of an idea this is when you find out that this was a fake Mr. Beast. All of a sudden, this dude is banning everybody in the chat. Over 200 people got banned from commenting in the live chat. Pretty hilarious that PPA dropped the ball big time by allowing this to happen. But man, I guess that's a lesson learned for them. Don't just let random people become mods. Unless, of course, it's Odoth. Then, okay. Or Heishe. They should be the mods for sure. And by the way, if you think this is actually Odoth, yeah, let's go with that. It's Odoth. Mm -hmm. All right, before we head out of here, let's play another round of the official Sorry Not Sorry Pickleball Podcast game. It's partner, body bag, winner off the net. I've been given three names, and I'm going to pick... Each one who I would partner with, who I'd body bag, and who I'd hit a winner off the net. Please comment your answer down below. So the three names this week are going to be J.W. Johnson, Leia Jansen, and Juame Martinez Vic. Interesting. Who do I want to partner, body bag, and hit a winner off the net? Who would you body bag? Who would you hit a winner off the net with? And who would you partner with? Me? I'm going to partner probably with J.W. Johnson. He seems like the most fun, the most chill. I would normally say Leia Jansen, but I don't want to piss her off if I do something wrong. She seems like she'd get a little bit upset with me, and I don't want to make her mad at me. Definitely wouldn't partner with Vic. I mean, he, don't, he doesn't play doubles. He just plays singles, so that's definitely out of the question. So yeah, 
JW, I'd partner with him. Now that means who do I want to body bag and who do I want to hit a winner off the nets? Well, I feel like if I body bag Kwame Martinez Vic, he'd probably just take it in stride. It probably wouldn't bother him too much. He'd just laugh at it, get the crowd to laugh at him. He'd probably do a few push-ups and be like, yeah, I got to be better than that. So maybe he's the right person for that. If I body bag Leia Jansen, she's just going to get fired up and it's going to make her really like probably want to body bag me back. Uh, So that's not a good idea. And if I hit a winner off the net against Leia, that works too because she'll probably get in her head, get all pissed off. Might affect her. She'll probably do the thing where she screams her name really loud like, Leia! Leia! If you notice she does that when she messes up? It's almost like she's overcompensating. Like when she was a kid, one of her parents or coaches would yell, Leia! Anytime she messed up. So now she's like saying it before anybody else could say it. So I think if I hit a winner off the net, she's just going to scream, Leia! And then just get in her head and hopefully lose the rest of it. I don't know. I guess it depends if she's using that Perseus paddle or not. So there you have it. That's what it is. I'm going to partner with J.W. Johnson. I'm going to body bag Kwame Martinez Vic. And I'm going to hit a winner off the net against Leia Jansen. Sorry, not sorry. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Make sure you hit that like button. Share this show with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do. Because next week, you're going to want to catch the next episode. I'll be covering San Clemente for the PPA Tour. It's going to be really fun because I'll actually be there. I'll be watching it on Saturday and Sunday live in that audience. If you're also going to be there on Saturday or Sunday, let me know. I would love to come say hi to you. I want to feel like I have friends because I'm showing up alone. And it's going to be kind of weird if I'm just by myself the whole time. So come hang out with me. Thanks for watching this week's episode. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Forgiveness is more than saying sorry. Forgiveness